I had a viewer reach out to me and ask about uh, 3D model formats and how they can transfer data and what the pros and cons are between these 3D formats and maybe some history. So I want to go over 3D formats today. Uh, as of course normally you have a uh, parametric model and the advantage of being parametric is you can roll it back and see step by step the features that were added and how it was made. Uh, any kind of universal exchange uh, format that we're going to go over today, of course, doesn't have a history tree and are commonly referred to as dumb solids. Uh, the first dumb solid that would maybe worth mentioning is an AMF file. That stands for Additive Manufacturing Format. AMF files are a mesh file that are used commonly for 3D printing and obviously additive manufacturing. AMF files are able to support color, material, lattice, and constellations. So if you have something like a texture, uh, AMF will carry the texture on after it is saved. Uh, here I can open up uh, Kira and I've got my AMF file that I've imported here. We can take a look to see its uh, printing performance. So if I have this scaled down to where we can print it, we'll hit Slice. So an AMF file, uh, in this case, prints 1 day, 8 hours, and 21 minutes, which should be very similar to any other file. Uh, but you can tell because uh, of this mesh format, you can see the mesh, uh, you lose curvature definition with AMF. The minute you save as an AMF, all of your curves become a bunch of straight lines put together to look like a curve, and you, you don't get that curve back. So keep that in mind, AMF is going to be a lossy format, and that's going to be very common moving forward. Uh, because curvature is replaced with a bunch of straight lines, that translates to a bunch of coordinates in the file format, which means that file sizes can grow. AMF itself, though, is a uh, relatively efficient way to uh, package a mesh format, so it's not going to be quite as big as a few other formats that we're going to go over today. Uh, let's get rid of this file and take a look at another format. Collada is another uh, format that we can take a look at. Let me open up a Collada file. Collada was uh, developed by a uh, technology group. They're called Kronos Group. Um, it is collaborative. It actually, Collada kind of means collaborative design activity. You'll notice uh, as I pull this up in the format, like an AMF, this transfers colors as well. Collada is a very advanced uh, format that it, it preserves things like textures, it even has animation, it can have physics, it can have uh, special movement. So Collada is a very advanced file and as you can imagine, it works with parametric uh, files because we're looking at a parametric file saved as Collada right now, but it's mostly used in the technology industry, game industry, uh, animation, graphic design kind of industry. And that's what it's cut out for. However, because it's a mesh format, we can also 3D print that. Why don't we open up Kira and see how it performs? You'll see uh, Collada comes in at a different orientation and size, uh, but we can uh, make this work. Uh, by highlighting this, I can apply some of the same uh, characteristics. So that should be about the same size as we were before. Let's do a slice. So we have one day, eight hours, and 26 minutes. Again, almost the exact same as every other format, as it should rightly be. You'll again notice if you can make this in Kira, or if you can 3D print this, it's going to be a lossy format. So that includes AMF, Collada, STL, uh, VRML, and uh, OBJ and, and other formats. So a lot of these universal formats you lose the definition on the curvature because it becomes a bunch of straight lines. Keep that in mind, but there are some transfer formats that you do not lose definition on. Uh, so that's Collada. Um, why don't we open up another one? How about we take a look at IGIS? So IGIS uh, was uh, developed for military applications and it is very old. We're 
we're talking uh, 80s and even the mid 70s. Uh, this format is actually really good for surfaces and uh, you'll see that if I zoom in on this curvature it's not rough right we're not losing definition this maintains uh, curvature. Uh, you also see that there's some light and dark spots and sometimes in this program dark spots can signify a surface error or something undefined. So the takeaway is a lot of people call it an I guess file because <laughs> there can be some errors or approximations with this format. It's, it's a very old unsupported format uh, but it still does the job. This has been replaced by the step format, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, the next thing to talk about is an OBJ file. Let's open up an OBJ. Notice an OBJ file is very rough, right? Uh, I just, you cannot 3D print this, you can. Uh, in fact, if I pull this up in uh, Kira, what's unique about OBJ, now that I have this pulled up, is uh, it's kind of an either or. Let's scale this the way that we have done before and uh, position this in the same spot. So OBJs, let's slice that. OBJs uh, can be approximated into a mesh as I have done, but you have an option of encoding that's very precise and can be compatible with curves and uh, surfaces and nerves. So it can act like a step file or it can act like an STL file. You'll notice it does not, if I open up this file, carry information about colors or uh, textures or anything like that. So be aware of that if you want to print in multiple colors. Uh, the performance is one day, eight hours and 22 minutes, the exact same as um, pretty much all the other files. Notice the uh, OBJ file, uh, you wouldn't do any animation with it. It doesn't do colors or textures. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, one of my favorites, the trusty step file. The step file, uh, again, one of my favorites is the standard for the exchange of product data. Uh, this was actually put into ISO standards, so it's a very uh, regulated format. It is the successor to the IGES file. And you can see this actually remembers colors, so you, it, it will support multiple colors. Um, it cannot be 3D printed, so it won't, it won't be accepted into a program like Kira. In addition to color, it remembers things like the type of material it is, and uh, uh, tolerances uh, can do material properties or uh, you know complex product-based data that you want to have as a mechanical engineer. It is probably the most standard universal file there is. And uh, I can tell from experience that this is very, very common in transferring for machines like CNC machining uh, because it does carry those tolerances and everything else. Uh, so if your supplier doesn't have a native format of the CAD files they're using, this is a way of opening them, I suggest a step file or a parasolid if you're uh, dealing with something like SolidWorks or NX and they you know, can transfer in a parasolid format. That's another excellent file to use, but that's a proprietary format, which is kind of beyond the scope of this video. Another one is the STL file. That's a very common one, probably very classic for 3D printing. Let's open up one of those. You'll see the STL file does not uh, transfer any data uh, regarding color and it's also a mesh format. So the STL file is uh, it's useful for 3D printing, but I would say it's not as useful as some of the other ones like AMF, Colada, or uh, even uh, OBJ. STL really refers to stereolithography. Uh, it's often nicknamed the standard triangle format. STL doesn't uh, record any information on textures or appearance or animations or physics or any of that. It is a very simple format. It has been the standard for 3D printing. It's a very old format. It's, I think it's the first format to ever be 3D printed from. 
it's uh, it goes back to the, I think the later 80s. But since it doesn't carry some of important information that uh, the future of 3D printing is going to have, like colors, uh, it's probably going to be overrun by, like we said before, AMF, Colada, OBJ, and some of the other, um, you know, information carrying formats. Let's take another look at uh, some formats. I'm going to open up a VRML file. This is what a VRML file looks like. Uh, this stands for Virtual Reality Modeling Language. It's been exceeded by a format uh, known as X3D, which I don't have a sample of. Like a step file, um, VRML is part of ISO standards. It's it comes from the 90s. Um, I know VRML 97 is a popular format, and it, I believe it actually was uh, from 1997. You'll see it carries uh, information about the object's appearance, and it is a mesh format. VRML was uh, intended, as S X3D is, to be a common internet format. Uh, I think you can print with VRML, but it cannot uh, uh, be accepted in Akira. So keep that in mind. And uh, those are common uh, formats for 3D printing. If you'd like to compare the information for some of these files, then you can even sort by file size. And you can see VRMLs are smallest, then AMF, then Colada, then STL, then OBJ, then STEP, and finally IGES. And looks like Step and I just are the same size, though Step is a lot more optimized. So I do recommend Step anywhere you would use an I just that has all the same features that I just does and more. I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.